This is Internet Marketing. Brought to you by Site Visibility at sitevisibility.co.uk. This is Internet Marketing. Now, before we start today, Site Visibility have recently released their 2020 PPC automation guide. This guide is completely free to download and it's going to help you to get started with each of the new automation settings in Google Ads. So this includes smart bidding, responsive ad testing, dynamic search ads and more. The best way to accelerate your PPC growth in 2020 is to start planning today. So download your guide for free at bit.ly, that's B-I-T dot L-Y slash PPC dash automation dash guide. I'll say that again, that's bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash ppc dash automation dash guide now today i'm joined by frederick rodland chief operating officer and chairman at Lido marketing technologies frederick how are you doing good thanks for having me andy well thanks very much for coming on why don't we start off with you telling us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about Lido? Okay, so shortly, Lido is a, a lead-driven marketing platform, basically meaning that unlike many other others of our competitors, we're f- focusing on driving more leads to you as opposed to uh, visualizing funnels and nurturing people for ages and ages. Uh, we're a fairly a young company. We're uh, one and a half years old. But already today, we're managing some 5,000 plus conversion points on customer websites for some 600 plus customers uh, worldwide. And uh, that's probably in in pure, uh, simple English, that means different kinds of uh, bot technologies that at the end of the day convert 30 to 70 percent more leads uh, for our customers every month. Fantastic. Now, today's topic is strategies and tactics to increase your leads in 2020. And I'd actually quite like to start off, if I may, from a kind of perspective of, I guess you could say, online dialogues or conversational marketing. I'm particularly interested in strategies around the fact that we have sort of evolved, haven't we, from sort of like sort of one to many type conversations before the sort of industrial revolution. Then we've moved to sort of more one-to-many through the internet and now we've sort of moved back to one-to-one haven't we so what are your thoughts on strategies around that yeah that's an interesting question uh that's uh, true for for sure so if you think about the early ages when we didn't have mass production of things everything was one-to-one we always talked to our local bakers and so forth then industrialization changed that quite a bit we can think of brands such as mcdonald's and uh, volkswagen as the picture uh, boys for for industrialization and marketing the mad men ages of the 60s where everything was sort of uh, done for you top down or one to many the internet changed that a lot after that the later internet again came along and changed that with social media And I think we're seeing a a transformation now again where companies are actually starting one to many but very personal dialogues Mm. together with their website visitors and and customers. So we've come a full circle, but we've learned a lot. We've combined the best bits from both one to many and one to one, I would say. Now, let's talk a little bit about content marketing because we constantly hear this kind of – Content marketing is dead thing. Well, actually, we certainly used to hear it a lot. I'm not sure if we're hearing it quite so much now, but what's your what's your take on content marketing and some real good strategies around content marketing going forward into 2020? Yeah, so I mean, content marketing is really the old age school of, of doing marketing. It's basically the same kind of billboard advertising. We're basically writing a lot of content. So if you think about what most companies today uh, are doing, and I used to be uh, part of the same group as well. We wrote white papers, which we put under paywalls where people had to give their personal details to download the white paper. And after that, we wrote some short snippets out of it into blog posts, added a CTA button. Uh, the, after the CTA button, they filled in a form, then they downloaded the white paper. Within the white paper, we told them to download another white paper, or they maybe <laughs> a, a week later, maybe we sent them an email with, hey, download this other white paper as well. (laughs) So, I mean, we can probably all recognize ourselves from this. And we were kind of on the right journey. We were thinking of the customer journey and supporting that. But we were very, very slow. So, I mean, if you think about yourself as a consumer, if you have a problem, you want to solve it, uh, 
do you really want to wait for a week or a day to solve that problem? I don't think so. So, I mean, content marketing has to evolve into becoming a dialogue and helping the customers directly solving their problems instead of sort of uh, thinking about very, very slow old school journeys of the, let's say, the Mad Men 60s. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And you also mentioned there about this sort of having a a conversation with people. What's the essence of that? What are the, what are the sort of main steps there that, that we should be focusing on, do you think? Yeah. I mean, uh, bots are a great example of that. And uh, the first thing, of course, is helping the customer and, and sort of getting in, on their side of things. I think uh, there's a really good story or a really good analogy from uh, one of the famous anthropologists, Judith Glazer. She's thinking of three different steps, and I think this is true in content marketing as, for, as well, that if you think about a customer, they usually have a problem. They probably Google for a solution for that problem, and they happen to land on your website. Now, when people are in stress, they're embedding the stress hormone cortisol. And if they can't find a solution on your site, they're probably going to take it out on your site. They're going to associate the negative cortisol hormone with your site. Mm. I mean, uh, you can probably think of your own children if you have some that you, you or uh, you might uh, lose your uh, temper with them if you're stressed, even though they haven't done anything at all. I hope I'm not alone in this. Uh, I, I don't know, but <laughs> I hope I'm not the only person in the world who might do that at some point. So the first thing is always in uh, is to try to solve their problem first. After that, you're ready to build a relationship with them. So you gain their respect, their trust, their support uh, by being uh, caring and candor with them. So you're creating a relationship. And after that comes the third phase, which is the key phase, which is the phase we want to get to as fast as possible. And that's co-creation. So we want to get into this uh, now tying back to the original question that you had about pre-industrialization, where you talk to your uh, private baker or, 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 or janitor or whoever you, you uh, talked with. Uh, in the co-creational space, you're actually talking to a sales guy or a sales engineer to try to solve your actual problem. And uh, I think this strategy is is the winning strategy. Try to solve your customers' problems first, help them along the way, get on their side as, as point number two, and point number three, try to brainstorm with them. And, and at that point, we're basically talking about like online conversations or phone calls or face-to-face -face meetings or something like that. Am I right in thinking that the, I think this has been termed uh, conversational intelligence, hasn't it? Yes. Yeah, yes. I think you might have yes. mentioned that. Because I'm interested because, I mean, do you, do you think there's a, a temptation sometimes to be, I don't know, a bit sort of trying to be too super scientific about it? Or do you think that's a, something that could be a problem and needs to be overcome sometimes on our approach? Uh, absolutely. I mean, we know this as consumers when we're using our Alexis or Siri or Google Assistants, they're... They're not yet there uh, in terms of understanding you. And you might be yelling to your Alexa to stop the timer for five minutes until you pull, pull the plug because it doesn't, doesn't understand you. Mm. And the temptation is there in B2B as well, or even B2C, to do the same kind of thing, uh, build machine learning models that understand what you're trying to solve. And usually the solutions are much easier. I mean, it might be as easy as just having something embedded within the content content that you've written that lets the customer choose something like a path a predefined path with five choices or two choices mm -hmm. and after that a couple of more choices to drill down to their actual solution instead of trying to come up with solutions that understand text or voice or something like that so it doesn't have to mimic real conversations it just has to mimic uh, being on the customer's side trying to solve their problem mm. Now, as we record this, uh, we're going through a right um, time with the coronavirus. You know, people, we're in lockdown. We've got social distancing. What do you think, just briefly, uh, what sort of e-commerce businesses can do right now, do you think, to survive and thrive, if possible, during this? Yeah, I mean, I think all e-commerce businesses are better off than non-e-commerce businesses. I mean, we've already heard from Amazon that they're hiring 100,000 more employees to to satisfy the, the sudden request in, in more people ordering stuff online. Mm. We've seen in Forbes and The Guardian writing about how this will transform online shopping forever because that, that's the only thing people have at the moment. I mean, I'm in, inside my four, four walls as well and the only way to order food, I mean, I could walk into a store, but I'm trying not to. I'm trying to social distance from everybody else just in case. Mm. So the only way we are, I mean, we're sort of forced to learn how to digitalize ourselves. And what companies can do then again 
is make sure that consumers and other B2B customers choose you and not your competitors. So try to convert more people from your website instead of uh, using the, I mean, I think now is the time to invest even more into online conversion than ever before. Mm. So we've talked about quite a few things. Um, if you could sort of select one or two things for our audience to take away today, Frederick, what, what do you think it might be? I think it is, uh, at the end of the day, it's serving your customers one-to-one. And it doesn't really matter if it's B2B or B2C. More businesses are moving online. The ones that are already there have uh, a few are a few steps before everybody else. But uh, at this point, it really the the sort of the future is 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 divided right now in terms of those that will succeed and those that won't and those that will are the ones that are actually investing in in online uh, online business converting more people from their website and and yeah that's basically it. Well, thank you very much, Frederick. Um, how can our listeners find out more about you and more about the Lido platform? Uh, they can go on to lido.com or if they want to chat with me or my bot, go to lido.com slash F-R-E-D-U. You can also find me on LinkedIn or uh, just email me at F-R-E-D-U at lido.com. Uh, another thing, you mentioned coronavirus. I have to mention this as well. We're working uh, as a pro bono with a nonprofit organization in the UK, uh, and we just launched uh, a bot for finding out how people are social distancing and what kind of symptoms they have. It's available on corona-help.uk. And this is actually uh, the data that we're gathering goes directly to the highest, highest levels uh, within the NHS and uh, number 10 and the Ministry of Def- Defense. So go there, help the local government gather more data at the same time you'll sort of check out our our bot technology as well so that's fantastic we'll make sure we put that in the show notes that would be awesome thank you so thanks for listening everyone um our show notes has as i've just mentioned will be in the usual place which is sitevisibility.co.uk slash im podcast if you're enjoying the show please leave us a fab review that would be great uh questions and suggestions the email is podcast at sitevisibility.co.uk you can tweet at site visibility remember we have a site visibility group on linkedin also so that's all from me andy and it's all from frederick thank you everybody thanks frederick and we'll see you next time on internet marketing <laughs>